Hi, welcome back to Rambling Roxy's Adventures Through History. Today, our adventures are going to take us on a couple different, uh, it's one stop, but it's going to include a couple things. It's going to be a stop on Ohio's Literary Trail. Do you know Ohio has a whole trail dedicated to literary places? Literary means places related to literacy, so maybe authors' homes, where great books were inspired, um, or just anything about books, so some of them might be libraries. And it's also coming up on Women's History Month in March, yay! So I'm going to be talking about a famous Ohio woman who was important to literature and also probably pretty important to the fate of our whole nation. I know, that's kind of crazy, right? All that rested on one woman? Maybe, we'll kind of see. You can decide for yourself if you think that she had a, that big of an impact on how our nation looked. It would actually make a great argument essay if you want to do some further research later on. So we're going to be talking about Harriet Beecher Stowe today and more specifically her house. So not only did Ohio play an important role in helping escaped slaves, one of the residents, Harriet Beecher Stowe, played an important role in sparking outrage against slavery and possibly the Civil War. Where Harriet Beecher Stowe lived in Cincinnati, she frequently came in contact with people who were working on the Underground Railroad and also had a chance to meet some escaped slaves. While doing this, she got to hear some pretty horrific stories of things that were going on down in the South. Because many of the slave owners are not going to say what all is going on um, with the slaves on their plantation. They're not going to give all the true stories. So as they got to meet these slaves that escaped, they got to hear all these horrible things that were being done and the reasons why they were wanting to escape um, between uh, just horrible uh, pains being inflicted upon them, their families being sold off and separated, and just the those endless amounts of things that I won't get into today, but we can only imagine the horrors that were faced. And she got to hear all these stories, and she was inspired by this and wanted to do something. Like all of us, we hear about an injustice and we want to try to do something to help it and fix it. So she was a young mother who grew up in an abolitionist family, so she was already against slavery from the get-go, and she felt very strongly about the subject, that she wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin, which showed the horrors of slavery to everyone, from being sold away from your family to the physical violence many slaves had to endure on plantations in the South. This book was pretty widely published everywhere, and people could read it, which was a new thing at the time to hear first-hand accounts of what life was like being a slave on some of these plantations. And this book helped kindle the fire of the abolitionist movement as more people demanded that the evils of enslaving people be stopped. So if she had, this was written before the Civil War, a lot of people read this book, heard all the horrible things, and started um, being more involved in the abolitionist movement to end slavery which sort of sparked the Civil War, which in effect ended slavery. So one could argue that she played an important role in helping to spark that war, which ultimately ended slavery and changed the course of our nation um, for the next 150 years. So it's up to you to decide if you think that she played an important role or not. I kind of think she did. Who knows what the power of books and literature can be. For me personally, it's pretty powerful because when I read books about different people and different things happening to them, it sparks a lot of empathy in me and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe these horrible things were happening. And it makes you feel a lot different than if you um, hadn't known about them before. But again, up to you if you think that she played a role in sparking the Civil War. Her house is in Cincinnati, and the tours give a lot more details than I gave today. There's also a children's education center that features fan making. Fans are very popular in the day. They didn't have air conditioning, so they make their own little personal fans. I should have one. Um, writing with chalk and writing with quills and ink. So there's lots of fun things to do at Harriet Beecher Stowe's house, 
and learn more about what inspired her writings and her famous book and why that kind of helped spark so much outrage around the country. Thanks for tuning in and we'll have more on the literary trail coming up.